set of wonk. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. I'm Cryptic Luna. We are back again with more planets. I hope that this episode won't drive my frustration with Ryu further into the ground because I'm already very fed up with him as it is. Let's jump into this. So we're going with this one with lots of dots. Lots of dots. A steady sound whispers into my subconscious, gentle and familiar, like a lullaby. Rain. This sound has never failed to put me back to sleep, no matter what hour of the day it falls. I sit up on the bed and peer out of the window. Sure enough, rain falls softly onto the school grounds, and the sky is tinged gray. Lovely. What a wonderful day. Ah, that relaxing sound makes me want to go back to sleep. Seems like I woke up before the alarm clock again. Ruiko is still sound sleeping in her own bed. Still sound asleep in her own bed. There's still time before I have to get up. I'll just relax here until the alarm goes off. That's how you fall back asleep. Java, I don't care. Go away. I lay comfortably in a in bed, enjoying the comfort of my blankets around me and the rain in the backdrop until... Ah! Time to get up. The mechanical sound of the alarm clock fills the room. What? Five more minutes. Rico's hand emerges from her sheets and turns off the alarm, then disappears back inside. How rare. Ruiko doesn't want to wake up this morning? Using every one of my efforts to fight the temptation of sleep, I slowly rise from the bed. I set the alarm to ring in 10 minutes so that Ruiko doesn't sleep the day away and take care of my morning routines. Before stepping outside, I take one last look out the window. It's really raining hard. If I step out, I'll get soaked and there doesn't appear to be any umbrellas around. I guess I'm gonna have to wing it. Holding my school bag over my head, I dart from the dormitory across the courtyard. My bag doesn't offer any relief from the downpour and I'm drenched within seconds. The rain blurs my vision and it's difficult to see anything in front of me. I don't notice until too late the figure walking in the opposite direction a few feet away. And so my body makes contact with it. Exclamation marks! Both of us fall at the same time onto the pathway slick from rain. Oh, I think I know where this is going. This is kind of interesting because I'm not entirely sure whose path I'm on right now. I know it's either Lucan or Caius. I know for a fact it ain't Ryu. I don't think I've selected any options that gear towards Ryu. Not surprising. My bag is flung across the yard, the papers inside exposed to the rain and instantly becoming wet. Ah, the rain ate my homework. Ugh, I want to curse right now, but there's more import but there's a more important matter at hand. It is my fault I knocked down this person after all, so I have to make sure they're all right. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Oh. Upon realizing who it is I've collided with, I lose all of my words. Kais looks at me with an expression, expressionless countenance. His hair and clothing stick wetly to his body. I return his stare with an equal lack of emotion. After the situation last night, I want to throw away all of my manners and not even apologize to him. Great. I know you feel that way, but please know. But I can't bring myself to be that disrespectful. Sorry. I try to stand up, but a sharp pain in my leg forces me down again. Great. I am injured. Kind of like when I ate the kitchen floor recently. That wasn't fun. I look down and realize that I've skinned my knee on the pavement. 
The rain has already washed away most of the blood, but the skin is bright pink and scratched in many places. How pathetic! All I want to do is get to class and out of the rain, then this had to happen. Why did I have to bump into Caius? Out of the hundred students in this school, it had to be him? I must have horrible luck. Ah, uh, you're hurt. Oh, he looks genuinely really sad about it. Ah, Caius! <laughs> I love you so much, Caius. Caius, still on the ground, notices that I've skinned it as well. I'm fine. But I'm sure you don't care anyway, so just ignore me and go on with your business. I try to stand again and fail even more miserably than before. The stinging of the freshly scra scratched scratch scat The stinging of the freshly scratched skin makes putting any pressure on my leg extremely painful. Listen. I don't have a ton of experience with skinning my knees. But I feel like the times that I've had, it's never made it so I couldn't stand on the leg. Great. As much as I want to walk away right now, I can't. Darn it. The few students that pass by are too distracted by the rain to even notice the situation and ignore the both of us. He stands slowly after a moment of hesitation and offers me his hand. I'll help you. I said I'm fine. Stop being stubborn. Clearly you aren't. He moves his hand closer, but I turn my head. I said I'm fine. Okay, fine. It's not my problem. Kais turns around and starts to head in the other direction, leaving me behind. He doesn't even glance behind him. I can't believe it. He's really just going to leave me here to drown in this rain? I've never met someone so rude and heartless in my entire life. Sure, I was being stubborn, but I was just testing him. No decent person would have left me behind. If you don't want help, there's not a lot other people can do for you. And he's just there are some people who have enough going on in their own life that they can't just stand around and wait for you to accept help. And that's not on them. That's on you, too. I guess the only way I can get to class is by crawling! But maybe Ryu or Lucan will come to my rescue before I have to succumb to that. How badly did you hurt your knee? Limp a little! Eh? Suddenly, I feel my body being lifted off the ground. Eh? I scream upon realizing why. Caius is holding me tightly in his arms. Her knees look fine. One looks like a little bit red, but not so much that she wouldn't be able to walk on it. His grip is strong and secure, and the warmth of his body counters against the chill of the rain. He's a warm boy. He's one of those furnace people. For a moment, I feel speechless and can only stare silently into his face. He's so drenched that the raindrops has he, that, uh, that the raindrops have even collected on the tips of his eyelashes. He stares back at me, the rain slowly dripping off his face. But even in this position, I can't forgive him so easily. He didn't leave you behind. Like, he got frustrated and impatient, but he still is helping you. Why can't you just be grateful? Marin, shut up! I'm so- I'm tired of Ryu, and I'm tired of the main character. Lucan and Caius are fine. <laughs> After what he did last night, there's no way that one single action like this can make up for it. He's afraid of himself. He wants to push people away because he thinks he hurts everyone. You don't understand that mindset. Get over yourself. Let go of me! Oh, you child! No. Let go! Child. 
No. I'm serious. No. <laughs> I hate you. No. Let go. I kick and flail while. So you couldn't walk, but you can kick and flail? Uh huh. Sure. He doesn't budge. Clearly, he's a lot stronger than he looks. Hmm. Or you're a lot weaker than you think you are. I don't know, Marin. Just saying. I won't move until you stop that. I won't stop until you let go! Then we're at a standstill. Then I'll just wait until you tire yourself out. Let go of me! Let go, let go! Guys, I'm serious! Let go! Ha! Go! Ha! Ha! She's literally just a child throwing a fit right now. Or I guess figuratively, because she's not actually a child, but she's throwing an actual fit like a child. Done yet? Never! I wheeze for air and unwillingly fall limp in Kaisa's arms. Just like a child. Thanks, Kais. I'm on the same page as you. Hm. I want to say something rude to him in response, but my lack of energy doesn't allow any real words to come out. I really should work on my stamina. You think? You should also work on your pain tolerance, considering you couldn't walk with a little bit of scratched knee. Kai starts walking, carrying me into the building and out of the rain. Because classes will begin shortly, the hallways are full of students. They all stop and turn around to stare at us with shocked and horrified expressions. Is that Kaius holding a girl? I feel sorry for her. Is he kidnapping her? Someone needs to stop him. People are shocked over this scene and continue to stare blatantly. They make no effort to pretend like they aren't looking at us. This is so embarrassing. Eh! I don't know. This scene that would be romantic on the un 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 English is not my friend today. This scene would be romantic under any other circumstance. Is the scene- Oh my god. <laughs> this scene that would be romantic under any other circumstance is the most humiliating of my life. I should be the one complaining. For someone so short, you're heavy. Interesting. Eh, how dare you! Shut up. You would've drowned if not for me. Okay! I think that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but sure, let's go with it. I guess. You must think I'm really pathetic. You are. What? You rely so much on others, hardly able to do anything for yourself. Don't you realize that in the end, all you have is yourself? You trust people so much. I hate that about you. I've told you many times you shouldn't be around me, and yet you persist. Why do you trust me? Having no idea how to respond to him, I fall silent and avoid eye contact. Yeah, I probably would too. No, actually, it's not so much that I would say I quote unquote trust Caius. If I. I do trust Caius. But if I were in her situation, it wouldn't be so much that I trust Caius, but it would be more of the fact that. I relate to him very strongly, and I can see what he's trying to put up, and I want to break through that wall so I can see that I'm pretty sure I can trust him. I won't say that I trust him because I have trust issues, but, you know, details. We'll fight through our, each other's walls together. I trust everyone until they've given me a reason not to. You may have hurt my feelings, but you haven't done anything to hurt me. Why shouldn't I trust you? 
Caius doesn't respond, walking in silence. Inside of the nurse- Inside of the nurse office. That's the name of the office. The nurse office. Look at that eye chart. <laughs> Inside of the nurse office, Caius places me gently on the bed. Honestly, I'm surprised it didn't drop me like the piece of trash you must think I am. Your mind reading. That's a unhealthy thing to do. Thinking that you can- well, here's the thing. You are a telepath, you can technically read people's minds, but you can't read Caius's at the moment, and you are assuming his thoughts. Assuming that he thinks you're a piece of trash. Which even though he's kind of aggressive language and doesn't always say the nicest things, that doesn't necessarily reflect what he thinks, and I don't think he's called you a piece of trash. The shit. Blah, blah, blah. The sheets quickly get wet due to my drenched clothing, and I sneeze. Achoo! The air in the office is cold and antiseptic, causing my skin to feel frozen instantly. The nurse looks at us strangely. What's going on, Caius Kuhn? She skinned her knee and couldn't walk, so I brought her here. I expect you can fix it. Oh, that's easily taken care of. Hold still, dear. The nurse moves- Alright. Let's all just accept that today's not an English day for me. The nurse moves to me and places her hand over my knee, but I stop her before she can use her psych. I can't help this stubborn attitude. I have to make Kai's feel bad for what he's done, and this seems like the perfect way. No, that's just really childish. And honestly kind of toxic. You want to talk about him being toxic? You're holding such a grudge over what happened last night that you're being so stubborn and saying you want to make Kai's feel bad. That's not healthy. A band-aid is just fine. Thanks. Yeah. Sure it is. Of course it is. A band-aid? She blinks at me curiously and looks down at my knee. But I can heal this type of wound easily. There won't be a scar left if you let me take care of it. Well... I think Kai's Kuhn should take care of it, since this is all his fault. No, it's really not. You admitted all the way back before you knew it was him that you took part of the blame. Why are you so toxic, Marin? Oh my god. Uh... Uh... Marin's a toxic, toxic, toxic person. She's just being stubborn. Please? I'd feel better if you did it, Kai's Kuhn. And now she's going to manipulate him, telling him it's because she thinks it would be better if he did, when really she wants to make him feel bad and punish him and put the blame on him. Toxicity. Don't get you a Marin. His eyes narrow into a piercing glare, but with the nurse present, he keeps his mouth closed. Well, this is between you two. Oops. Well, this is between you two. I have work to attend to, so if you need me, I'll be in the staff room. The nurse gives us a strange smile and leaves us alone in the room. As expected, Kai snaps immediately once she's left. What the hell are you doing, Kazuoki? Guilt tripping you, manipulating you, you know, being toxic to you. Because you need more toxic people in your life, Kaius. Apparently that's what the game is telling me. It's okay, Kaius. I'll reach through the screen and we will be okay. I will be there for you. And I hope I won't be toxic. I don't know. I don't know if I'm a toxic person or not, honestly. 
after what you said to me last night, you can't expect me to be reasonable with you. He literally just told you to stay away from him because he's a danger to you. Pick up your feelings, cry a river, build a bridge, and get over it! You are going to leave me in that town all by myself. That has nothing to do with what he said, which is not the thing you said you were angry about. Also, that is still him trying to put through this wall. And, you know, it was your choice to stay, even though you didn't even know if he had a teleportation home. So, you see Kai's, you know, you know his psych is not teleportation. And even though you wanted to comfort him, you make the active choice to go away from the people who have teleportation psych with Caius, who does not have a teleportation psych, and you don't even know how he's getting back home. Granted, I'm sure it was his father, because I'm his father can teleport as well as many other things. His father's a vastly talented person. However, it still applies that you know he doesn't teleport. You made the choice to go with the person who can't teleport and you're blaming him. What is he gonna do? He can't teleport you back to the school. I'm not having this argument with you right now. I'm not a confrontational person, but I can't allow someone to disrespect me the way that Caius has. <sighs> Disrespecting him back is not the way to go about it. Then when are you? I know if I let you leave right now, you'll just run away and avoid me. You don't know anything. Maybe you're right. I don't know anything about you or why you're the way you are, but... It isn't that I don't want to know you, Caius. You won't let me. So you can't blame me for that. I won't let anyone in. That includes you. I don't know why you think you're special. But I think you at least owe me an apology for those horrible things you said. He said, Granted, I may not be entirely accurate because it was last episode, but he said, Get away from me. You're not my friend. It's for your own good. I'm a bad person. More attacking himself than you. Yet he owes you an apology. <sighs> I've been nothing but kind to you. I don't deserve this treatment. It's not about that. Like, the point is going straight over your head, Marin. I don't owe you anything. Kaiskun. Are you really that heartless? Are the rumors really true? Really? My god! Ah! Uh, I just wanna take Marin out of the game and again, defenestrate her. <laughs> I thought things between us were getting better. I thought it was changing. Nothing in life is a steady uphill slope. Especially when it comes to someone who's mentally hurt or emotionally damaged. If a person is going through something like depression, anxiety, eating disorders, trauma, anything of that sort, particularly, but anything in general including just skills, nothing is a straight linear path. There's gonna be divots, there's gonna be standstills, it's not always going to be uphill. And it puts a lot of pressure on a person who is doing the best that they can with what they have and the way that their mental state is 
for you to rip them apart when they fall down and tell them that they haven't changed. Kaya's opening up to us about the kittens was a huge step. And yes, later on that night, it was a less huge step. But it is still vastly important to acknowledge he still made that step. A step he had not made with other people before. That is still a change. It doesn't mean he's magically fixed. It doesn't mean he magically trusts you. It doesn't mean he's not hurt, confused, twisted inside. Those things don't just go away because of one incident where things started to get better. And even after that moment, he's come back. He took you to the infirmary because you were hurt. And all you can focus on is what happened last night. That frustrates me. <laughs> People saying you don't have a soul. At first I thought it was ridiculous, but now it's starting to seem like they're right. Toxic. Toxic, toxic, toxic. Guys, listen to me, hun. You deserve better than Marin. Let's be real. Let's... <laughs> you could do so much better than Marin. <laughs> A surprised expression passes his face and he visibly flinches, as if my words have hurt him physically. I mean, yes, he literally, like, this is his struggle. He hates himself. He feels he is a threat. He feels he is dangerous to other people. He feels like all he does will bring people down. That is what he constantly feels. That's why he puts this wall in between him and other people. And that there was a clear sign of that in your guys' conversation last night. And you're just ignoring it, ignoring it all, and only focusing on yourself, Marin. Why am I getting so fervent about this? It's a game. <laughs> For a second, he's silent, but I can see him thinking. He looks really sad. Caius. I want to hug him. I want to tell him it'll be okay. I want to work through this with him together. I don't want to fight him. Marin, stop getting in my way. I have no idea what kind of things I would hear if I could read his mind. I'm almost glad that he blocks me from reading his thoughts. Probably a lot of, like, bombardment of anxious and self-deprecating thoughts. Including something along the lines of the one person who I was starting to make progress with is now calling me heartless. I'm just a heartless person. I'm bad. Ugh. 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 I'm way too passionate about this. Okay, let's try. Power through this. If you want to believe those rumors, fine. I can't stop you. I can't stop anyone. But no matter what others think of me, I can't change. I think you can. You just have to try. He is trying! I believe in you. Do you? Do you really believe in him? After you just chastised him and told him he hasn't changed at all because of one argument you two had last night, even though he tried to open up to you about the kittens and he took you to the nurse's office. Like, do you really believe in him? Or is that just fluff you're selling him? I don't think you believe in him. I don't think you genuinely believe in him. A long moment of tense silence passes between us. We stare at each other awkwardly. After a few more moments, Kai's turns around and opens the cupboard in the corner of the room, retrieving a band-aid and the antibacterial spray. He approaches me and directs the bottle to my skin knee. What are you doing? Taking care of it. What does it look like he's doing? <laughs> what does it look like? Immediately after snapping at me, Kai's pauses, seeming to regret it. It's going to hurt. 
Is this your way of apologizing? He doesn't have to apologize to you. You need to apologize to him. I'm a defenestrate. You're so hard, Marin. Oh my god. Ugh. You can interpret this however you want. He pulls the trigger and the burn of the spray on my open skin makes me squirm. Ah, that really stings. I told you it would. Kai stabs at the wound with a cotton ball he got from the cabinet. I'm surprised at how gentle he is. Why? He's so gentle with kittens, why wouldn't he be gentle with your wound? After cleaning the wound, he applies the large band-aid. His fingers are cold on my skin. How did he go from being warm to cold? You okay, Kai? Is your body temperature just like 180? <laughs> it's done. It feels better now. Do you think you can walk? I'm not sure yet. You just skinned your knee! Ugh. I climb off the bed and put pressure on my leg. It still hurts and I stumble a bit, caught off guard by the pain. Caius reaches out and grabs my arm, stopping my fall. He immediately lets go once I've steadied myself and stares at me with, a reluc with reluctance. Sh should I carry you again? <laughs> I involuntarily laughed at his sudden shyness, which only made him blush deeper. I'll have to limp, but I'm okay! Thank you! <laughs> Caius immediately leaves, disappearing behind the door. I wonder what's going through his head. Why won't he just let me know how he feels? <laughs> It's finally lunchtime, but because the rain still refuses to let up, the options of where to eat are limited. The courtyard and roof are all completely dry, it's leaving me with only a few choices. Maybe I'll eat in the classroom today. There are so many people in the cafeteria, I'll just go in there. I'll just- I'll, I'll go crazy just being in there for five minutes. Oh, hi! <laughs> After getting something to eat, I noticed Kai is heading to the school's exit on my way back to the classroom. I wonder what he's doing. It's still pouring down rain. He's not planning to go outside, is he? I should see what he's up to. Despite what happened this morning, I don't want things to be awkward between us. I know Caius won't take initiative, so it's up to me. Hey, Caius! I catch him before he steps outside and he stops walking, looking at me begrudgingly. Oh, he looks sad again! <laughs> His sad look is so hurt! Like, Ryu's pout is like... Uh insincere and almost sarcastic. Lucan's is like insecure. Caius's is like you can see the hurt he carries. Oh, Kazuoki? He looks at me uncomfortably, clearly still feeling uneasy after a confrontation. Your leg. He looks down at my knee, still covered with the bandage that Caius put on it. Is it better? Yeah, you did a good job fixing it. It hardly even hurts anymore. Oh, okay. You aren't worried about me, are you? Yeah, like I would waste my time worrying about you. Heh, <laughs> right. Anyway, where are you going? It's still raining pretty hard out there. Everyone is in the cafeteria today. It's too loud in there. If you go outside in this weather, you might catch a cold. Oh, you aren't worried about me, are you? <laughs> Very funny. I just don't want you to get sick, that's all. I'm sure there are plenty of quiet places inside where you can eat lunch. What about the library? Food isn't allowed in there. How about Okinuma Sensei's office? Oh, that's just gonna piss him off. <laughs> yeah! Like hell I'm going to eat lunch in there with him. Um, well there has to be an empty classroom somewhere. Why do you care so much? It's not like it concerns you where I'm eating. Well, I thought it would be fun for us to eat lunch together. There is no reason why you have to be by yourself. You're never going to leave me alone, are you? No matter how mean I am to you, you just keep coming back. 
You're like a parasite or something. Wow, um, I can't say I've ever been called a parasite before. Whatever. It's become obvious I can't stop you from following me around. So if you really want to eat with me, come on. reaches down and grabs onto my hand, pulling me along with him down the hallway. Ah! For someone who hates to be touched, I never would have expected Kais to be the hand-holding type. And what does this mean? Anyway, I definitely don't feel any affection from his gesture, but he doesn't seem to be radiating as many hate-filled waves as usual. Why are you holding my hand? Because you walk too slow. If you're going to follow me, you'd better be able to keep up. Okay, so where are we going? I don't know. Um, maybe we should have some kind of an idea where we're going before lunch is over. Oh, I know. How about my telepathy class? It'll probably be empty. Kaius agrees and we enter room 1C, which is empty just as I expected. We sit down at the desks across from each other and start to eat our lunches. Oh. Somehow, the atmosphere around us doesn't feel as awkward as usual. It's more comfortable, though I can't quite pinpoint why. Maybe it's because the feeling of friendship is finally becoming mutual instead of just one-sided. But regardless, I'm happy like this, just the two of us eating lunch together. Even though I can't deny the fact that Kaius is a sarcastic bastard, there's a likable quality about him. Why are you staring at me like that? What? I was staring at you? Yeah, you were. Oh, sorry. I guess I just kind of spaced out. I was just thinking about how I'm glad we're finally having a nice time together without fighting. After last night, I really thought you hated me. You need to understand something, Kazuoki. I didn't have any choice but to leave you there. It was better than the alternative. Alternative? If I hadn't walked away at that moment, I might have lost control of my psyche and hurt you. Takashima knows how to piss me off. He knows how to make me angry enough to lose control. When he said that you wouldn't defend me if you knew the truth about me, he wasn't lying. Kaiskun, the reason you left me alone was to protect me? Kais nods reluctantly. Then, I'm sorry I yelled at you. You're right. I really didn't understand the situation. But Ryukun is wrong. No matter what your psych is, no matter how destructive it may be, as long as you aren't using it to hurt other people, I'll still continue to be on your side. It's not as if it's your fault that your psyche is capable of hurting people. You're trying to prevent that from happening, and that's all that really matters. Kazuoki... Kaius looks at me directly with a slightly red face. I, um... He opens his mouth to say something, but his voice is drowned out by the bell ringing overhead. The sharp sound of the bell seems to have brought him back to his normal personality, and he quickly stands up, gathering his things. Oops, I hit page up. See you later. Yeah. Kaius leaves the room, stepping around some of my telepathic classmates who look at him in surprise. Of course, all of them are wondering why Kaius was in the empty classroom alone with me. But they can think whatever they want. It doesn't matter. I've always known that Kaius is a good person, and today he proved that to me. Once school is out, the rain has finally stopped. The air feels heavy in the aftermath of the summer rain and the ground is covered in stagnant puddles. As I'm headed back to the dorm rooms, my cell phone begins to ring. I wonder who it could be. No one has called me since I got to Planets. I was starting to forget that I even had a phone. Hello? Marie-chan! It's me, Haru! Haru-chan! I miss you so much! I'm 
miss you too. Life without you has been horrible. There's no one to stop the mean kids from picking on me, and I have to sit by myself at lunch. Please, Marin, come back home. I'm sorry, Haru, but I have to stay at Planets until I can control my telepathy. And who knows how long that will be. Well, can I come visit you then? You can, but now that I think about it, I have no idea how you're going to get here. I got here by teleporting. That's definitely a problem. Well, the summer holiday starts on Monday. You're going to come home for that, right? Oh, yeah. I didn't realize it was so soon. I think my horror voice has changed. But, it's fine. Really? Yay! We're going to have so much fun together, Marin. I know, I can't wait. I'll see you soon, okay? Woo! Okay, bye-bye! Bye! I hang up, suddenly feeling very excited. i completely forgotten that summer holidays were starting so soon. Time was really flying by fast. In the room, Ruiko is already there, relaxing on her bed. Oh, Marie-chan! Welcome home! Ah, uh, thanks, Rui. You're here early today. Yes, I wanted to get back soon because I have something to ask you. Oh, what is it? Did you want to go shopping together this weekend? I haven't gotten to go in town so... <laughs> okay. I was doing so good. Did you want to go shopping together this weekend? I haven't gotten to go into town in so long. And I have to admit, I'm getting a little stir crazy. Sure! I've only gotten to go there once, and that was just to eat dinner. Great! I'm so excited! Yeah, I bet. I'm excited too. Good quality time with Ruiko. Because I love her, and she's adorable. How about we go on Sunday? Okay. Sounds like a plan. I flop down on my bed. Glad to not have to worry about homework for once. Only fun lies ahead. Mm -hmm. If this if this is what I remember it being, it's definitely not only fun. Because things get a little um uh, rocky to say the least. But we'll see what happens. I don't even know if this is what leads to that. Oh! Okay! So that's the end of the day, apparently. So... No, no, stop! So that's the end of this video. We didn't have any choices. However, we got some important character development with Kai's. And I think I'm on Kai's path. All the signs are pointing that I'm on Caius's path, which is good, because last time I thought I really screwed it up. Not that I mind Lucan. But Lucan has a secret that I'm not particularly the most comfortable with. So, I didn't want to have that one be the first path I ended up on. Though I find it interesting. Even choosing to my heart's truth, I'm still Caius's darling. Or Caius is my darling, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this video here. I will see you guys next time. Remember to love yourselves and stay safe if you're feeling talk- Oh, I messed up. If you're feeling talkative, leave me a comment. I love comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you really like my content, subscribe and read and ring the notification bell. Send prayers for my English speaking, because it's not going well today. Remember to love yourself and stay safe. Goodbye! <laughs>
You're never gonna make it. You're not good enough. There's a million other people with the same stuff. You really think you're different, man? You must be kidding. Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it. It's impossible. It's not probable. You're irresponsible. Too many obstacles. You gotta stop it, yo. You gotta take it slow. You can't be a pro. Don't waste your time no more. Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? I don't give a damn if you say you disapprove. I'm gonna make my move. I'm gonna make it soon. And I'll do it because it's what I wanna fucking do. Because all these opinions and all these positions, they come in in millions. They block in your vision. But no, you can't listen. That shit is all fiction. Because you hold the power you're as long as you're trying to make it.